Yeah, big time, big time. Any time if I come to a system, if it's got a leak, it's, it's got to be straight on it because uh, it is a big part of our lives at the minute, especially the way the world is at the minute as well. The engineers need to be more aware of it as well. We need to get it out there, uh, letting customers know that it's, it's a big deal, you know, that it can be harmful to our environment if things don't get fixed. There's information everywhere, all online, on government websites. Um, and obviously, your health and safety at work, you've got to follow it anyway. Uh, I think a lot of the older generation engineers uh, can sometimes get complacent and they don't, they're not too bothered, to be quite honest. Um, but from what I've seen, from me coming through, it's been gas, 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 gas. That just gets hammered into your head every day. So, yeah, I, I think so, personally. I've heard of people coming through in the industry anyway. Some of the ones that are leaving the industry, not so much. There's definitely a lot on it. Um, for all the sites that I've been on, there's a, there is a big emphasis on the release of refrigerant, and especially being in the time in college so far, the main emphasis is on release of refrigerant and how to secure that and make sure that doesn't happen. Um, I do think there is enough there, especially looking on the IOR website, there is a lot on it, and there's a lot of education on it at the minute as well. I would say that yes, the majority do. And the thing is, I think if you look back at the older engineers, if you'd had all this training back in the 80s, would we be in the situation we're in now? Would we have had to have developed all these gases we did? Because when you had 12, 502 and all that, all those years ago, they were really good refrigerants. Now, if everyone did all the leak detection and all that, and maintain the systems properly at the time, would be really where we are now. But it's getting that whole industry involvement. We want to do like a green thing. We know loads of smaller companies who are brilliant at that sort of stuff. And you look at some of the bigger companies and you're like, sort of, hold on. You're not doing what you say you do and all that sort of stuff. When I was an apprentice, you know, there were stories of refrigerant being used to blow out cores, refrigerant being used to, to pump up car tires. You know, there was an, an awareness of the GWP, let alone the ozone there, when oxy first was identified as an issue. Um, uh, leak testing was, wasn't was really carried out, you know, it wasn't a necessity to carry out, it was only if there was a problem with the system. Um, but obviously now there's a lot more options for leak testing um, as we probably discussed with the students, the apprentices, everything from um, leak testing with a bubble up to UV leak detectors, um, ultrasonic or even using the trace gas but again with a leak detector. So there's a lot more options and with F gas now the qualification, the 2079, um, the emphasis is on leak detection and the direct impact to the environment, which also could be the indirect um, impact to the environment. So hence is part of the whole procedure for FGAS when a system is being commissioned that these should take place. Um, and the good thing is now the engineers, the senior engineers out there are practicing this so the apprentices don't know any different, which is a good thing. So yeah, it's part, it's part, it's on the menu now. It's, it's a lot more prominent than what it used to be in my experience. Yeah. What the F gas has done, it's it's raised awareness of you know what's happening in the industry, and obviously how uh, depleting the ozone can be through refrigerants. Hence why they're visiting new areas. So if you look at some of the older refrigerants, R twenty two, four hundred four, they had a very high GWP. So basically what they've done now is they've started introducing refrigerants now. It's, it's got a very, very lower impact and eventually it'll probably go sort of carbon neutral. I think at the moment, the likes of people like Grand Fox and stuff like that, they're very, very restricted in what they can do because again, they're at a level where they need more people to get involved with them and interact with them. And that's exactly what they're doing by using the internet and seminars and meeting up and you know, team talks and stuff like that. What they're doing is they're looking at uh, companies and how companies operate and stuff like that. So 
like I was saying earlier on, if every kilo of refrigerant you buy now, you're accountable for, whether that's, you know, you're using it at one site, using it at another site, and it's the same with recovered or reclaimed refrigerant. So there's different vessels that you get um, for removing refrigerant from site and stuff like that. So basically what they can do is they can either clean it, reuse it and stuff like that, or it'll be for destruction. So, but I say like now, if you look at how the industry's moved on, the likes of those refrigerants, eventually they'll phase them completely out. It's going the right way. It's like anything in this industry, you know, if you've, if you've, if you're being policed correctly, and you know, you've got the right people and you're all singing for the same hymn sheet, you're gonna, you're gonna get the right result. And it's, that's how, exactly how it's going now, you know? The thing is with companies like yourself, you're trying to push the industry forward and that's the way it's got to be. It's got to go that way to meet obviously environmental impacts, energy, you know, what you don't want. If these units lose refrigerant, what happens is they continue to run. They're using lots of excessive electricity. Like you get a unit where the condenser is blocked and not being cleaned properly. You know, again, it's going to use a lot of energy and stuff like that. I think it's a case of working with the clients and recommending them the best. and. You know, the, the engineers need correct training on how to clean units and make them run efficiently as well. You know, because you, you've got your FDAS qualification doesn't make you an engineer. You know, it's a mandatory requirement for you to use the curriculum, but if you look at the industry as a whole, the level of training when I joined it, you know, we done a proper apprenticeship, we went to college. You know, we done a three year term, you know, the firm I worked at, you know, encouraged you to do overtime and work with the right engineers so you learn as you went on. And unfortunately, you know, even with our own business, you struggle now at the time because, you know, people essentially just want your equipment running. Yeah. So, and the other thing as well, obviously, where the world's changed so much years ago, you could take younger generation people onto a site and they could work on now. Uh, now insurances have changed. You know, certain sites we work on, you ain't allowed on there unless you're 25 or above.